Hello students, welcome back to my lecture. Today, I will be talking about one very important poem prescribed in the syllabus of BA English Honours paper part 3 and this particular poem, our Casuarina tree written by Torudat is from paper 7. And in today's talk, I will be discussing how to write a critical appreciation of a particular poem and on this light I will be trying to discuss the poem Our Casuarina Tree written by Torudat. Okay then, so one thing I need to mention here, though the poem um, is from part 3 syllabus, the way I am teaching is effective for both part 1 and part 2 students as well because this is one of the ways to learn how to how to uh, write a critical appreciation which is there in the syllabus for both BA part 2 and also BA part 1 students. Okay then, so let us begin. So before going into the poem, our casuarina tree, let us understand how to write a critical appreciation of a particular poem. Okay, and which is important because uh, I have got many calls from my students. I have got many complaints from them like they are not able to write a proper critical appreciation. So perhaps this outline might help them in writing their answers. Okay, so let us start with how to write a critical appreciation of a poem. So, when this kind of questions are asked in your question papers, in your exams, uh, what most of the students do, they actually give some kind of plot or the summary of the poem or the uh, line by line analysis which is available on various internet sources. Okay. So, but critical appreciation does not mean it only talks about the critical, uh, the detailed summary of the poem or the uh, storyline of the poem in layman's word we can say that. Rather, it had so many other things also to offer. So, in order to write a good critical appreciation of a particular poem, the first thing which, can come, uh, which needs to be kept in your mind is that we need a very classy and informative introduction. So, it should be something which catches the attention of the evaluator, right? So, in this particular section, you can talk about uh, if there is some striking things in this particular poem, which is very di different from the other poems you have read. and you can give certain information, suppose some quote of any other uh, poet on this particular poem or if it has been used in some other novels as the title of the novel is taken from this particular poem, something like that. Okay, so this kind of informative introduction will definitely catch the attention of the paper evaluator. Okay, so immediately after that, you can move to the next section and try to make separate stanza. And all the stanzas are should be in certain connection with each other. That's not that does does not mean that you write something in your first stanza or in the first paragraph and in the very paragraph you have started writing something else. There should be some kind of coherency. Okay. And in the second part, you may talk about the poet and the general features of the particular poet. Okay. Uh, in general features, you can talk about uh, various themes he or she has covered in her writing career or his writing career. Then you may talk about his or her important books. Okay. Very important poetic works. You may mention that but 
that does not mean you have to give some kind of biographical detail of the poet no not at all you can avoid that as well then after this part you can go back to the poem you give a detailed background of the poem i mean in which context in which setting this particular poem was written what was the time looks like what was the history behind that poem okay so if you give a real background of the poem it will be very easy for you to proceed to the next section which is about the poem in this particular part you will talk about the poem what the poem is all about but one thing is very important here you must not go for line to line explanation which is available on your internets and all you may not go for that line to by line by line information rather what you can do you can take a stanza at once and you can explain the things you can paraphrase the thing okay but it should be not very huge it should be very brief then immediately after that you may discuss in a separate paragraph about important images important metaphors important symbols what is been described in this particular poem okay and immediately after that you have to go back to the technical aspects of the poem whether the poem is a sonnet if it is sonnet what is the rhyme scheme if uh, that is some other lyrical poem what is the rhyme scheme there what is the um, what is the important way of describing the things so all the technical aspects i am talking about here like if there is some kind of uh, assonance or some kind of uh, rhymings or uh, what are the meters of the particular poem what are the meters in separate lines and what is the type of the poem how this poem is different from the other types of the poems you can talk about these kinds of technical things in your critical appreciation and last but not the least you have to talk about a proper conclusion so this part is very difficult for certain students because uh, giving a proper introduction is relatively easy but not a conclusion a conclusion needs everything it talks it talks about the brief summary of the particular poem and most importantly in your conclusion part you have to talk about your observation about the poem so it is this part where you have your uh, license but not that kind of poetic license so that you can say anything about the poem no like not like that but you have to be stay connected to the poem so if you follow all these points i am quite sure you can write a very good critical appreciation of any poem or any other prose now the, why this is interesting because uh, in all the year students for first year second year third year all have to attempt certain parts of the poems okay and most importantly for the third year students you are supposed to answer one unseen passage okay one unseen passage uh, in your i guess in fifth paper unseen passage and unseen poem so if you can practice your analysis in this way then you can uh, you can fare well in those papers papers okay so without any delay let us move to our discussion today today i'll be talking about uh, torudat's poem our casuarina tree okay so as i have already mentioned in introduction section you need to talk about the poet tarudat was uh, a female indian poet in uh, pre romantic early romantic period of indian english poetry she has written she was foreign educated she was she knew french and english and uh, she used to write both in french and english and she has written so many important books and poems and um, you can get the all informations from your sources as well okay so let us move to the poem this particular poem our casuarina tree represents 
द आर्ली रोमांटिक पीरियड इन इंडियन इंग्लिश पोएट्री द पोएम कॉन्टेंट्स सेवरल फीचर्स ऑफ द नाइनटीन सेंचुरी इंग्लिश रोमांटिक पोएट एंड दैट इज द लव ऑफ नेचर और द लव फॉर नेचर सो हियर द पोएट नॉस्टैलजिकली रिकलेक्ट ए चाइल्डहुड एसोसिएशन विथ ए कैजोरिया ट्री इन हर फैमिली ऑर्चर्ड द ट्री इज ए ट्री एज वेल एज ए सिम्बल ऑफ सिम्बल एंड रिप्रेजेंटेशन of time and timelessness which is very important for the development of her poem okay so then uh, the poem opens very dramatically so there is a dramatic way opening of the poem okay and the poem opens dramatically with a strong visual imagery so here we can see we have an oriental image of a of the python like creeper entangling the rugged bank of the tree okay so there is a creeper which has actually entangled the structure of the tree the bank of the tree and the tall casuarina tree in her majestic splendor stands defiant and indestructible so the tree is very beautiful and it's very vast so this is the description which is been given for the tree so uh, so the length of the first line of the poem it enhances the effects of the large python which entangles the bank of the tree okay the grip is as firm as the poet's disease the poet uh, we have to understand we have to remember that the poet died very early uh, in his early 20s because of some disease so this grip of the grip of the creeper which looks like a python is uh, can is can be compared with the poet's disease as if the grip is firm enough to end the life of the tree however the large stature of the tree its strength and invincibility so carefully built up it it actually succeeded in reducing the python like creeper into a mere scarf so because of the great structure of the tree the the form grip of the creeper looks like as if it is some kind of scarf okay so there is a point of similarity between the tree and the poet the giant tree defies the python like creeper in the same manner torudat also defies the threat of death emancing from her fatal disease she remains radiant and immortal as the brave tree so we can see there is certain connection between the tree and the poet so the first stanza of the poem shows how the tree having survived the attempt on his life the embrace of the python like creeper is supposed to be fatal no other tree would have been able to survive the creeper but this tree has been able to thwart the challenge the tree actually overcomes the challenge of the creeper the creeper wanted to embrace the tree tightly and squeeze its sap but the tree actually manages to make free of it by wearing it like a scarf so this can be comparable with the disease which the poet was actually suffering of okay just like the tree the poet also overcame her disease i mean the point the poet was written the poem was written she overcame her overcame her disease just like the tree overcame the struggle uh, the embrace of the creeper okay so what happens the tree actually meets the challenges like a proper hero so 
the heroic description of the tree is very important in the first paper, first uh, stanza and then in the next few lines the poet presents a feast of senses so the sense of sight smell and touch she has used one epithet crimson which the crimson glow so the epithet crimson actually adds to the visual appeal and the birds and the bees the sound of the birds and the bees talks about the auditory senses and the garden is overflown with the sweet song of the coquila so we can also have certain auditory senses here so if the first stanza presents a picture of life with all its sensory details the second stanza also continues to do that okay so the tree becomes a symbol of the triumph of life over death the eternity of the tree and uh, the ephemerality of mortal life are juxtaposed in the opening stanza of this particular poem the second stanza as i have already mentioned describes the beauty of the casuarina tree in the early hours of morning and also during winter when a gray baboon sits on the top of the tree watching its offspring play down below so the beauty of the morning is enhanced by the mellifluous song of coquila and this particular stanza is a continuation and development of the note put forward by the poet in the first stanza so there is certain coherency between the two stanza and you have to establish that as well the image of baboon and its pumy offspring leaping and playing it actually reinforces the theme of life this is how we can celebrate our life okay and we have references to the splendor of the water lilies and the flower theme reinforces the idea of the continuity of the life just like the baboon okay so in the third stanza the poet says that the casuarina tree is dear to her not because of its magnificence but also because in her childhood she played under it with her brother and sister so if we study it in detail we can see we can find there is a heavy nostalgia attached to this particular tree with the poet okay it is this tree under which she had played she had spent her childhood she had spent her childhood with her uh, brothers and sisters so the memory of this tree is very special to her from this respect so we can see she has got some kind of sentimental affinity with the tree which is augmented by the memory of her lost brother and sister so this sentimental affinity can be connected with the lost of the sister and the brother okay then uh, also if you read the poem closely the third stanza reminds us of william wordsworth's famous lines in tintern away his uh, famous poem wordsworth's famous poem tintern away where the poet actually declares how the sense of natural beauty were very much dear to him because his dearer sister dorothy so in that particular poem so this is also another technique where you can actually compare the two poems in this particular poem i have compared with the with the childhood connection of tarudath with with uh, with her brothers and sisters 
and I can connect it with uh, Ten Turn Away written by William Wordsworth where she, he talks about her his association with his uh, sister Dorothy. Okay. So here in this particular poem her personal grief transcends the barriers of the poem and it becomes very much universal and the tree seems to make a dirge like murmur like the sea breaking the beach full of sunlight okay so this sentimental affinity of the tree with the poet is very important here and that is been also talked in the third stanza the next part is very important because i am trying to connect the religious sentiment attached to the tree and to that of the poet as well so the poet's deep religious attachment asserts itself in the first stanza when she actually declares that the unknown is however known to the eye of the faith so though certain things are unknown it is known to the eye of the faith okay the lament of the tree which can be heard only by those who have faith in nature so the poet was actually writing the poem not from india but from somewhere else perhaps from france okay but there from also she could hear the the lament of the tree she could actually hear the uh, lament of the tree which was the tree was actually was in her calcutta home it was far far away from the place where she was actually living in but because of the religious connection and faith she could actually hear the lament of the tree which is very important in this particular context the lament of the tree as i have already mentioned can only be heard by those who have faith in nature so the connection between man and nature is also been established here and this particular line can be also read as a comment on the loss of faith and the dry materialism of victorian age so more or less the poem was written in the later part of the victorian age and so it talks about how the loss of faith was uh, very much predominant in the late victorian age and which is a sharp contrast to the presentation of the poet in this particular poem which actually transcends the barrier of time and place so in this poem it is also be shown the true remains with the poet embedded in her imminent being sometimes rise in vision as the poem sublime okay so there is a strong religious sentiment religious attachment depicted in this particular poem so in the last stanza as i have already talked about the poet actually urges the casuarina tree to remain deathless like the trees okay so that is the central essence of the entire poem so the deathlessness of the casuarina tree the poet is actually urging to keep the tree immortal so that her memory is her attachment with the tree remains immortal okay so here we are reminded of the theme of triumph of art over time not only art art is also a representation the triumph of nature over time okay and it is the immortal quality which i am trying to talk about here comes because poetry can keep mortals immortal okay so it is the poetry which is been described in this poem i mean the lines the ideas the concepts which has been described in this particular poem we already mentions that 
it is the poetry we can keep keep models immortal and the hope is that art can make mortal beauty immortal okay so life does because there is no other way life does can uh, actually defeat death but his only way is to do it through art and this particular poem the kazuna tree actually fall prey it will fall prey to the killer time certainly it will definitely happen the tree will die in some point of the time but according to torudat which is more important which has been described in this poem as that the love with nature the love and the attachment will actually save the beauty of the nature despite its physical death thank you if you have any uh, queries you can put it in the comment section